Folks, it is the one year anniversary from when we went out and caught our two pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde. So today we're gonna do something you guys have been asking us to do for a while. We're gonna go out and catch a white perch or a crappie to put in our 55 gallon tank. You can see Clyde's hiding back there in the bushes. But something else we're also gonna do is bring our cast net along with us and hopefully we can catch some threadfin shad or some other sort of bait fish besides the minnows we've been feeding them. And it'll kind of be a, a one year anniversary slash birthday present for these fish. But this is the tank we're planning on putting the crappie in. And as you can see, we've got a little snail down there. We've got two algae eaters and two catfish. We got our albino catfish and our channel catfish. So we're gonna try to catch a small crappie that can go in this tank and we can raise him up and eventually put him in a 300 gallon. So we're shooting for something really small, maybe four to five inches. All right, we got the tracker hooked up. Now let's take a look at some of this gear. I'm used to rigging up rods in search of 10 pounders with heavy duty stuff. This is as far from that as you can get. We got little ice fishing rods, six pound fluorocarbon, and little crappie jigs. The crappie jigs are 1 32nd ounce, that's a small jig. We also got a couple of what I call brim busters rigged up with some corks. We're gonna be throwing some small minnows out there trying to catch us a little small crappies. And hopefully that's gonna do the trick on catching one of these Alabama black crappies. I'm gonna show you the spot we're about to be fishing that Liz and I used to fish back in our tournament fishing days. We got the main river channel right here, and then we got this little back pocket area that's got a bunch of cypress trees in it, lily pads, a lot of vegetation, stuff like that. So we used to come in here and catch a limit of small bass. Never caught a lot of big ones in here, but usually the fish would use this as a spawning ground. They'd come in off the main river, come up in this shallow water right here and spawn. So there ought to be some small crappie. That's what we're shooting for. I wouldn't be surprised if we catch a bass or two. All right, so to start off with, Liz is gonna use a tiny live minnow and I'm gonna fish with the ice rod and a crappie jig. And Liz has caught Bonnie and Sheriff and I've caught Clyde. So I think it's only right that I catch this crappie, but knowing Liz, she's gonna catch it. But she's really good at catching big fish. So I might have the upper hand on this. So we're fixing to start fishing. See what happens. Got one? All right, Liz, what you got? A bass. A bass? Yep, a little bass. It's all right, at least there's some action in here. Now there's some life. Oh yeah, look at all this action. This little ice rod puts on it. Oh, here we go. Oh, I had him. I had him. That was him right there. Jeez. Perfect size. My goodness. He's off. Not impressed with the hooks on this little jig. Man, that was it right there. There he is. Oh, oh come on. And he picked it up and ran off with it. All right guys, four bites, no fish yet on this little crappie jig. Maybe swapping soon. He's running. Got him. Ah, lost him. Yeah, he had it. It's my, and it's my. Oh, no, what did I get? Oh, I caught a little bass. Look at that. I thought I missed him. Look at this. That is incredible. That fish, look at the size of this bass, was eating that size minnow. That is incredible right there. Liz, what do you think? Yeah. We got to keep go him. <laughs> got to keep him. Liz agrees. He's going in the 55 gallon. That is literally incredible. That's the smallest bass I've ever caught in my life. Right there. I like it though. And if he can eat a minnow <laughs> the size of himself, he's going to fit right in. 
All right, guys, that's why we chose this spot right here. We are way back tucked behind all these cypress trees. And if you can see, this is a perfect little sanctuary for all these fish that they come up in here and spawn. And they know that all these little fry and stuff are going to be able to make it because they can get so far back in there that these predator fish can never get back in there to them. So hopefully we're fixing to come across a little black crappie. Oh yeah, we definitely got fish on the grab, right up under the boat, right there. Here we go. Dag, oh, he came up and hit the bobber. He didn't even hit them in a, put on some top water plugs here. Hmm, Chad. Grab it, guys, man. I'm gonna grab another coming back over there behind you. Got him? Got off, didn't he? Got him. Oh Liz, you might have him. That is him. Look at how yellow he is. Man. It's strange, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost like a. It it's almost it? yeah. It's almost. It looks like a mix between a crappie and a maybe even a stripe or something. Can't get his mouth open. Here we go. That one. What do we got here? What do we got? Oh, I don't know what that was. I think it was a bass. Was too big anyway. Yeah. Mm, these things are good escape artists, that's for sure. Well, folks, we just did a size comparison on this guy and the bass, and this guy was about four times as big as him. And since we're going to do a micro tank with small bass small catfish we're gonna have to catch something smaller than that but unfortunately we ran out of time here today we tried to catch something smaller didn't get it we're gonna head in we're gonna spend the last you know 30 minutes trying to get out here and catch some shad for the bonnie and clyde but i got a surefire way to get us a small two three four inch crappie this month so the crappie will be coming in the tank later this month all right guys here he is i know you can barely see him Let's put him down in there. See what he thinks about it. <laughs> He's so much smaller than Bonnie and Clyde were. We put them in. The catfish is probably going to be roughly the same size. And uh, that's why we didn't want to put that crappie in here. He's just a little too big. We want to be able to keep these for a while. As you can see, he fits right in. He'll have plenty of hiding spaces at, at that small size. But, Al Jeter, I hope you grow up pretty quick because he was trying to eat a minnow twice your size. There you go. That's a good comparison. Yeah, they're the exact same size, I'd say. The catfish and the bass. Alright, he's just chilling down there on the bottom, so... As we do with all of our other pets, we're going to let you guys name them. So leave a comment down below on what you think we should name our new pet bass. we got a plan to go get a crappie next weekend, so maybe he'll be coming in our next Tank Tuesday video. But right now we're going to go over all the questions, or the top questions from last Tank Tuesday while we feed Bonnie and Clyde. And unfortunately we didn't get them any shad, so we're just going to have to give them double minnows for their anniversary. Alright, so first question comes from Cameron. Cabazalo. Sheriff looks a lot whiter than usual. That's one really cool thing about Sheriff is he actually can change colors. He can go from a dark purple to a really yellowish sunfish look and it seems like he's really that dark purple look whenever he's sitting real still but whenever he gets active sometimes 
he turns that yellowish color. Next question comes from Karen McClowski. Batma Bass, will you ever change the water temp to the temp of your lakes and ponds around you during the change of seasons? Well, our aquarium kind of heats up throughout the year. Like in the summertime, our house temperature heats up, so there, therefore their water temperature also heats up. And then in the wintertime, it's the same way. Whenever it cools off in our house, it kind of cools off in their aquarium. So the one thing that I did notice was last winter, they ate a lot less whenever the water was cooler. So that is something pretty cool that we may try to track here in the future. Next question comes from Bet Avena. I was wondering if you could do a video on how the fish react to the Hydrowave or Hydrowave Mini. It'd be great if you guys did, thanks. So if that's something you wanna see, leave a comment below. Let us know you'd like to see us put that Hydrowave in there and create those bait fish sounds and see if it affects Bonnie and Clyde. Next question comes from Obates MC. Will you ever put a small bluegill in there and see if Sheriff is a cannibal? So, that is something we may do in the future because bluegills and shad are typically, you know, the main forage foods for a largemouth bass. But I can probably tell you up front, there's no way that Sheriff is going to be able to eat a bluegill because a bluegill is really wide and he has to eat something very skinny like a minnow or a worm or something because his mouth isn't near as big as a largemouth. All right, next question comes from Brian Mouse. Can you feed your bass fuzzies, which are small mice? That would be very interesting. And guys, I don't know. I mean, that, that's something that we might would consider. I know Liz would hate it. But if you guys really would like to see something like that, we might would consider it. But again, leave a comment below if you'd be interested in seeing that. All right, next question comes from Mason Taylor. Bama Bass, will you feed your pet bass gizzard shad? Yes, we will eventually do that. We fed them threadfin shad in the past, and Bonnie was able to eat one of them, but now they've gotten much bigger. We're going to try to feed them some threadfin and some gizzards again. All right, next question comes from Michael Nuss. Could you add just a few drops of different scents to the tank, and then see if the fish smell it and change their behavior? So this is something I was kind of thinking about doing, you know, already, and, and I kind of think it would be a good video. So they make some products out there. One of them is called a bait cloud. And you drop this ball in there and it puts off and it's supposed to attract fish. So again, if you guys want to see something like that and see how these fish react to different scents, leave that comment below. All right, and last question comes from Jacob All Day Outdoors. I know you guys will not do this, but I'm kind of curious on how the fish getting hooked will affect their eating cycle. Well, Jacob, we're not going to do that like you said, but I do know that fish, it just a lot depends on the genetic makeup of the fish. I've actually caught a fish multiple times in one day before the same fish hooked it threw it back in the water and hooked it again some fish don't care or they either have a short memory but we're not going to hook our fish just to do that test but i would say that it would on average take a couple days for a largemouth bass to get back to its normal habits all right guys that's going to wrap up the video make sure to leave a comment below for our new pet bass's name hit that subscribe button so you can see what we name them here in the future and also see this new crappie that's going to be coming soon and we'll see you all next Tuesday. Bonnie and Clyde were pretty looking people, but I can tell you people they were the devil's children.